Hi everyone, uh, here is Luca Brillante. I am a professor at Fresno State and I am collaborating with the Livermore Valley Wine Grower Association to demonstrate uh, you some pruning techniques that help with the longevity of your vineyard. We are here into the McGrail uh, vineyard, uh, so thank you for their collaboration in giving us access to their site. I'll show you the production pruning of this cordon, uh, which will be spur pruned. So in this case, we are going to leave like uh, traditional two buds. And uh, I just want to show you a, a, a few strategies to avoid large cuts, maintain uh, the cordon free of desiccation and um, uh, try to maintain the overall uh, uh, longevity of the vine. So, um, of course, when we uh, prune a cordon, we want to avoid excessive raising of the spur position and keep them low. However, excessive compression can create uh, issues. Uh, and in some cases, we would like to keep uh, uh, some branching developing. We want to uh, keep the, our uh, cuts uh, small and on young wood. We want to respect the crown of the shoots themselves, which is the place where the grey vine can um, uh, more effectively protect uh, himself and uh, regenerate. And then we, uh, uh, we, we, we want to make our cuts flat and perpendicular uh, to the cane, so we don't want to make them like diagonal because the diagonal cut has a longer surface. Uh, if I look at this spur, for example, in this case, I will maintain the lower position and will cut the two buds, which means I'll cut here. Uh, however, I will need to remove these. I have two options to remove these. I could cut here or I could cut a little bit higher and in order to leave a little bit of wood above the spurs that will give me uh, um, some space for the for the drying to develop. In this case, I have another uh, spur. I'm going in this direction with the lower one, which is going into the inter row. So that will be not a good position for me to maintain our spur growing. In, that, in this case, I will keep the higher one and I will uh, remove the lower one. The problem is that at this point, I will need to make sure that my cut is on the one year old wood, otherwise, um, uh, of course, I will remove the spur, but it's also important that I keep the crown bud intact. So I will not go very flush and cut too close to the two-year-old wood, but I leave the crown bud in place in order to ensure that I have uh, that ability. Uh, of course, that will uh, uh, oblige me to um, shoot thin next year, but uh, I will facilitate the development of the position. Same thing here, I'll go in between the first internode and the crown bud and I leave the crown bud intact. It's a little bit of a space uh, which facilitates the redevelopment of the vine. Um, here uh, uh, I, I will go back to the lower one and the same. I, I, as the, uh, I will be too close to the, to the lower shoot and then we'll create a desiccation area under the spur. I will prefer to remove it on the one year old wood and leave this as a buffer wood. I could go closer a little bit if I want, but that's, uh, uh, but I will not be cutting here uh, and I will keep the, uh, the, the, the lower, uh, um, some distance from the lower uh, shoot so that it will not be drying out. Uh, same thing here, right? I'm cutting on the one year old wood and I am leaving some respect wood. In this case, I went very flush because, you know, even though uh, I didn't leave the crown buds, so I will not have to shoot in this next year, but I have all this space here which will be able to dry out. It's a cut on a one year old wood, which is less sensitive to disease. And uh, I will have the ability of drying all this section without impacting the sap flow to this spore. Then here, there's many cuts that have been done very close to the old wood. 
So this has created, in, in, although all the cuts were singularly, individually small, has created an area with a lot of, of drying. Uh, so if I, um, you know, I, I, and I have one which is not too shoot thin, and so I will need to cut this as well. So if this, uh, if I cut this flush, I will create another cut like, like similar to this later on, enlarging the area which will be drying under the spur position. So one thing that I can do instead is that I can leave a piece and then if I want, I remove this bud already uh, or I reduce that as shoot thinning. But that will avoid me to uh, uh, create a, se a series like that, which will be uh, drying out uh, the, the position. And then next year, when I uh, this uh, buffer wood has been is dry then I can go closer and cut it so at that point it will be dead vessels same thing here in this case these positions are very uh, very close to the wood so if I cut this flush I will create a scar that enters into the old wood uh, and uh, uh, same thing if I cut the, the other one so in this case I will cut uh, uh, I will remain this which is the uh, in, in straight on the um, is the closer to the old wood. I will cut this one above the crown bud, so to maintain that area uh, of respect and having still the ability of the second year old in between old wood in between these two to avoid a desiccation under that spore. Um, and with the uh, pruning we adjust the crop load and uh, it's important that we try to uh, just keep the number of buds that we want uh, in order to um, avoid to uh, cluster thin later on it doesn't make sense to leave a higher amount of buds and then drop fruit it's rather better to just keep uh, just the number of buds that you need according to your production goals so if if you think that in every bud there is one to 1.2 uh, clusters in average, then uh, you can count the number of buds that you have, multiply that by your average cluster weight and uh, uh, by the bud fertility and have an idea how much this plant will produce. And if that is already above what you need from this vineyard, rather better to leave a lower amount of bud now than come back later with the second passage of a crew. Uh, Thank you for uh, your time in uh, looking this video and uh, you want to stay connected with the Livermore Valley Wine Grower Association for future education.